Now, let's move on to our fourth session of today's startup workshop. We are very honored to have Professor Tina Choi, Executive Director, Global Venture Development of Pan-Asia Venture Development Platform, Adjunct Assistant Professor of CUHK Business School to discuss with us on creating global advantages under the new normal. Professor Tina Choi is the Managing Director of Visely International, a company specializing in marketing and communications, technology commercializations, venture development, entrepreneurship and executive training, education and coaching. Let's welcome Tina. Tina, please. Thank you. Okay, so uh, today's our workshop is about uh, creating global advantages under new normal. So actually it's a course for me in CUHK uh, with over 30 hours. I try to summarize a bit and then uh, give you some takeaways, especially for those startups. So uh, first of all, today's agenda will be uh, who am I? So I will introduce a bit about myself, PAVD, and uh, what I'm doing as an entrepreneur nowadays. And the second uh, topics will be about where we are. So I will talk a bit about the decoupling uh, between China and US, and then how can we cope with it? The third agenda will be, so uh, after discussing all those situations and circumstances, how can we reshape ourselves in order to better uh, capture the trends? And also, I will give you some food for thoughts. And finally, I will open the floor for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, you just feel, feel free to share your points. And then uh, we will summarize at the end, and then I will answer as a whole. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, just like what uh, they have just introduced me, so I'm the executive director uh, focusing on the global venture developments uh, for Panasia Venture Development Platform. So we uh, have the name of PABD, and I'm also the adjunct assistant professor of the Department of Management in CUHK. Actually, I am living a very new lifestyle called Leisure Life. This is not new, actually, because I learned this concept back to 2015. And also, I reinforced my concept when I was having a trip in the Bay Area uh, in a global trip when I was studying my EMBA. And then uh, I tender my, my career life and then to change to a slash life. So right now, I have the teaching life, media life, entrepreneurial life, and also fundraising life as well. So uh, without seeing a lot of things, uh, I would like to highlight the entrepreneurial part because I am currently a life coach and also a professional trainer, as well as some uh, advisory and consultant work I will uh, work with on my own. And then I'm also working closely with uh, PAVD, and which is a program that I will elaborate more. So this will be another guest host as the Interlex TV, which I will be holding a program this afternoon, actually every Wednesday. Okay, so what is PAVD? Uh, this is an independent self-funded platform with a mission to engage the EMBA and MBA students in CUHK. So if you are interested, you can join our MBA programs and then you can uh, join the full courses. So instead of the summary of today, and then uh, we also have the graduates in developing the high quality, uh, high growth venture in Asia. We also uh, help for the venture investing, entrepreneurship training and education, as well as we help the fundraising for innovative ventures. One important point to note, the PABD platform is free of charge. So instead of a lot of entrepreneurs, when they are submitting projects to me, they ask how much I should pay or what's the cost and then how long I should commit. I mean, the time is actually uh, independent to the results, but instead of you pay us, we actually paid you uh, for free. Uh, you have the chance to reach our panel's investor and also you can get the presentation deck and also an, an investment proposal from our students as well under the supervision of our chairman. So our chairman is uh, Professor Wilton Chow. Uh, I will describe, describe him as the master of investor because he has over 30 years of VC experience as well as uh, his the first generations of VC back to 
I mean, over 20 years ago, Professor Chow, correct me if I were wrong. <laughs> and also, uh, he is also watching us. Yeah. And then uh, he also teach uh, uh, entrepreneurship, venture capital, and also uh, PE in CUHK for more than 12 to 13 years in CUHK. So join us if you are interested. So uh, me, myself, I'm the international project director and now is the uh, executive director. And also I have our team, uh, Mr. Simon Lam. He is our international project supervisor as well. And he is also the deputy CEO of uh, Munich uh, Reinsurance, the largest reinsurance firm uh, on the globe. So this is the core team. And then uh, our panel also have the investor consists of over 60 people. And together they control uh, over 500 billions of assets in US dollar. So you can see we have a lot of seasoned investor. Uh, we have a good distribution network and also uh, an investor network. So just like what I have said, if your project are being selected into our platform, you can reach our panel investor. And if you are interested, you can also view our investor panels in this link. Other than that, we have a sustaining uh, platform for our students. So after the very harsh and long training by Professor Chow and also me myself. Uh, we also convert some of our students. They are interested in fundraising and we have a list of qualified fundraiser as well. So let us know if you are interested in finding those qualified investor or uh, fundraiser. You can always search the profiles in our website and then you can get the information. Okay, so what is the course about? It's actually we got the real projects other than, you know, all those imaginary or you can just get some cases from the internet or some famous school. So we got the real projects on the ground and then uh, our students and entrepreneurs will collaborate all together for a course of over three months at, at least, yeah, I will say. And then uh, we will give the opportunities for the remodel projects to be presented to our panel once a year to have the real fundraising. So instead of the course, which unlike the um, we make the real world, we are actually pushing the students and also pushing the projects into the real funding raise, fundraising platforms. So this is all real money. And then the students can fail the course if the investor have given them a very bad grade. So everything, instead of the teaching, we also get the real projects from the markets, real funding, as well as the students and entrepreneurs can taste everything in real. And the project's requirements is actually some um, not successful projects. Maybe they have raised funds for over two to three years. They have tried all the methods. They have tried all the remodeling in the markets, but they have failed. So uh, we will give the students and also entrepreneurs a new way of thinking. And also we can help for the remodeling. And for the success rate, a lot of people will ask. So after the project and the course, we have 20 to 30% success rate. So remember, they are already raising funds in uh, past two to three years and they have failed in the markets, but still we can get them revived and then the successful rate is more than 20%. Other than that, we also offer some venture investment program which target for the investor. So we have worked with several organizations and also higher education institutes to provide some early stage venture training for angels, VC, and also uh, impact investment executives. So last year we have uh, collaborated with uh, SMU in Singapore, Singapore Management uh, University. And also we have some uh, projects to collaborate with some famous Taiwan uh, university as well. And this year originally, uh, before the pandemic uh, situation, we plan to collaborate with uh, CUHK Sunjun, and then uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, we have delayed it. So if uh, you are a VC and if you're an investor, if you're interested, you can always uh, send us an email and we will keep you in mind. Usually these kinds of course will uh, open once a year and then we will not uh, having more than one cohort every year because we have enough uh, teaching schedule every year. And then the other one is about the entrepreneurship training. So uh, we have collaborated with uh, Tech Accelerator in Tech Weiwei, the four. And then this year, it should be last month, October, we have just finished uh, at Desavia 
with the Spanish back, uh, Spanish government backed fintech startup immersion program. So all those six to seven projects, they are backed by the Spanish, uh, Spanish government, and then they present to our panel, and you can see that we, they also receive the entrepreneurship training from us. And this will be a good uh, for you if you are an entrepreneur, you receive such kind of training and then you get the good networking as well. So no matter you are on the investor side or on the entrepreneur side, uh, we offer some incubation uh, program and also we have the training program as well. So this is a bit about uh, the PAVD. And then uh, one more thing, just like, uh, uh, Apple presentation, they have one more thing. So recently I have joined an uh, education, music education AI technology application company in uh, Science Park. So I am their deputy CEO, it is Play Notes, which is for uh, music learning and appreciation. So why I am talking about this as an entrepreneur head, because I will be sharing some kinds of uh, uh, strategy change and also our latest application to adapt to the new normal just match our topics today. So this is our core business nowadays. So we have the oral training app, which is prepared for the ABRSM. So if you if you have participate in such kind of tests um, in piano and also maybe your son or daughter, they have such kind of uh, music examination, you will know about that. So we are the oral training app for ABRSM, AMEB, and also LCM and MDP. So they are different kinds of uh, uh, institutes which grant you the certificates in uh, your music grade one to eight. So uh, we will we have used the AI and also technology applications to train your uh, students to have such kind of oral tests and better prepare themselves for the examination. So this is the core business right now we have nowadays. And under the new normal, our company is also facing a very huge challenge. I think a lot of us as an entrepreneur, we all face about that. Because the ABRSM has announced other than UK, other than UK, uh, for example, the most uh, intensive examination training uh, city it should be Hong Kong. So they have ceased, they have stopped all the examination this year. So if there's no examination in Hong Kong, especially the second largest market of our company, we suddenly stop all the business. You know why? Because no exam, no training. So how will we cope with it under the new normal? I will be share at the end of our presentation. So stay tuned. Okay. So uh, it's all about myself, my PABD platform, as well as my new role in as an entrepreneur. So the second agenda will be where we are. So a lot of people will say that I don't have a crystal ball, but I will say you must create your crystal ball because you have to sense all the micro movement in order to capture your technology and company into the new mega trend. All those micro movements are an indicator, very important indicator for the future mega trend. So you have to create your own crystal ball. Okay, a lot of people are discussing about the China and US discoupling. So how can we cope with it? I think in my uh, panel discussion yesterday, I have talked a bit about that. So I will not repeat. So if you are interested, you can always refer to the playback in the uh, link provided by Cyberport. So you can uh, check about it. So we will redefine the new normal. So once again, I will reinforce. So if those people, they are playing, they are dreaming, everything will come back after COVID-19, after the US presidential election, everything will back to the normal in their mind. There is actually no good old days. So everything has changed structurally and also uh, uh, permanently. For example, previously the US and also uh, China uh, relationship, they are focusing on business incentive instead of some political or strategical rivalry. But nowadays, political rivalry overrides everything. So just like Trump, he is very proud of himself for be being a very good deal maker. But actually, um, yeah, you can comment on yourself. Okay, so uh, how can we cope with it? I always being asked by students and also all the entrepreneurs. So we all know about the situation, how. We should not discuss about what's only, we should know how. 
So I have summarized all the thoughts into three R. The first one is rethink. So under such kind of situation, you have to rethink your company's, your technology's core competence in order to choose the right market to play. For example, if you are a biotech company and if all the technology, the core ones are actually licensing from US, and then if your company are situated and located in Hong Kong or somewhere else, which has belonged to the China Alliance instead of the US one, you should rethink about where the market that you want to play or where your company want to locate it instead of staying in Hong Kong or in China. But uh, in the other way around, if you are targeting to the markets in China, mainly focusing in the distributions and also selling of your products or market your service in the China world, I mean, in terms of the China Alliance, well, on US one. So you have to rethink about what kind of government policy, what kind of guanxi relationship terms in terms of Chinese, but a little bit different. So the guanxi part is really important. There's always art in communication, just like I am um, also seeing the big news today, the headline news uh, about the ENS Group IPO. So other than your core competence, other than everything is right, you still have to uh, play with the protocol of the alliance that you have chosen. So if you have chose to be the China focus uh, company or your market your technology or products into the China Alliance market, you should rethink about whether you can collaborate and also write on the trend that the government is focusing on. For example, uh, the 5G network, the um, data analytics, and including the data tracking and also uh, uh, the data analysis as well as the fintech development and also cybersecurity because China is really uh, pushing hard in promoting its uh, RMB cryptocurrency internationalization. So internationalization is another key redefinition. So no matter you like it or not, Hong Kong has been defined by US as the China camp, according to all the measures that it has uh, already enforced. And also a lot of China companies, if they do not open the book, they have passed the bill by the standards in US, you have to delist from the US uh, stock market as well. So think about all those trends and then rethink your core competence, whether you can capture all those mega trends, especially in cybersecurity, your data restriction as well. Because in China and also US, in the short run, the data cannot directly exchange with each other. But the result and application can. So you have to rethink your core competence and choose the right market to play. There will be two distinctive systems that you have to play with, choose carefully. And the other R is about, we define the company development direction in order to capture the mega trend. I have just covered a bit on the mega trend. So another one other than all those big bold words like FinTech, cryptocurrency, uh, and also uh, cybersecurity, Another key mega trend is about sustainability and also green technology. So South Korea has already, uh, uh, the government has already announced to have uh, 95 billion US dollar uh, to support the green economy development, especially after COVID-19. Every people, including the investor, they have to rethink whether their investment can be sustainable for the future. So green tech is another key things that you can look into. So whether you can capture it a lot by your technology or business model, you have to redefine your company developments. So other than redefine it, you have to communicate it transparently and persuade your investor or new investor to support your company development. So I believe you have already uh, have another session about how to craft your sales pitch, but I will also share the key points to note on how to recraft your company investment pitch, especially if you have some changes in the development direction to capture the mega trend, to make the investor believing in your new story, but uh, displacing your con continuity and also you show how to show uh, them the results as well for the future. Okay, this is the second R. 
And the third one is about revisit the globalization strategy. So when we are talking about globalization, a lot of people will have the thoughts about whether globalization has died after COVID-19 or after the China-US discoupling. But actually globalization, if we have uh, discussed about it academically, we have the four step G-I-L-T, what is it? Globalization, internationalization, localization, and also translation. So for this kind of uh, this four step, I think we have to redefine the localization and also translation. Of course, translation is not literally means you translate into a different language, just like our company play notes. So when we are trying to uh, having the exam, I mean, the AI and tech app about uh, the examination. So for Hong Kong uh, students, we usually point out what they have uh, do it wrongly and what they have seen wrongly. However, for the Western world, for especially for UK or Canada, we have to uh, always give them encouraging work. So have a good try and then it's really nice try. So the translation is not simply about the language directly, literally, but also about how you capture the cultural and also innovative part. So this is the translation and about the localization, just now I have said, uh, the world is undoubtedly, you, you can't uh, uh, play against the force. You have to do two set of programs. So either the US CAM or the China CAM, you have to develop both in order to fulfill your internationalization strategy. So instead of one for all, just like the old days, you have to rethink about all the localization and also internationalization strategies. And regarding the supply chain, this is another key point to discuss. A lot of company, they have to reshore some critical components because of the, you know, decoupling trade war and also uh, they will class, we classify as a strategic material. So you have to reshore some critical components and we start to rethink now. Um, a lot of saying has said uh, China will be replaced by a lot of up and rising uh, countries because a lot of US, uh, companies, they have moved their production line to India or Indonesia, Southeast Asia countries anyway. However, there, there is another saying, China has taken over 20 years to learn every single step in the QA process. So it cannot just move the factory from one country to another, and then you can get everything perfect in place. So instead of, uh, you know, uh, being hit by the end result, if you are changing your factory or we uh, we show your critical components, you have to take the advantage to have the process innovations instead of just moving the com uh, the factory from one country to another. You have to rethink what parts that you can exert a better QA and QC because as is. Uh, uh, the technology is advancing. However, the skill set of certain kinds of uh, people-driven process, you still have to train them. Of course, you can say I have to, I can uh, have the robotic process for all the production line, and then it's okay. But still, you have to pay very careful uh, attention to your process uh, re-engineering and also QA QC part. So, other than all these three R, this is the, a kind of uh, skill that I can share with you. And then uh, another key point is that a lot of people have discussed about whether there is fund, uh, funding gap over this year. But I can show you some uh, important figures. So you can see the later VC, they are actually uh, having a patour in the investment. However, the deal size, the deal size number is actually raising the red line here. And for the early stage we see, we have a rising in the deal side, but we have the smaller number due to the travel restrictions. I think the most uh, mostly impacted part will be the angels and also seed fund. And then you can see the deal size maintain more or less the same as well. So no worries, it's always the golden rules that you have a good uh, projects, you have some good business model and ideas, the funding is always there. And when you look at the uh, news report today about uh, the CVCF events, uh, they have also a very good result yesterday. We have raised uh, 630K uh, million dollar yesterday, if I remember the numbers correctly. Okay, so the third part is about how to reshape. Um, we have another sharing from the Harvard Business Review. This is very uh, latest 
article. So just September and also October edition. So about how to adapt your business into the new reality. So this will be one of the sharing that I borrow from HBR. There will be two important steps. The first step is how to identify the growth opportunities. So a lot of people, they will discuss about the mega trend nowadays. So how can you uh, redefine your company into different layers and categories to capture it? For example, all of us know, every people will know, under the pandemic situation, people spend more time at home. No doubts, right? So what will they do? So a lot of people will say, oh, a lot of work from home culture. But other than work from home culture, if you have more time at home, you will eat at home, you will have your entertainment, and even though you do your uh, workout at home as well. So these are all the three things that you should have the messy way of thinking. I borrow it from the McKinsey uh, point of view, the mutually exclusive and comprehensively exhaustive, if I remember correctly. Okay, so other than work from home, eat at home and entertainment, for the work from home part, you will have the home space, okay, home office space. So if you are developing some technology, which can help to uh, monitor the performance or some refurbishment and also digital coordination, you will win, definitely. But this uh, chart is not uh, complete enough. So for example, I'm in the education field. I uh, track all those social media to do the social listening. I can see that a lot of students, so if you're staying at home, you work at home, your kids are actually uh, working side by side with you, they are studying, okay? And a lot of people, they complain about uh, the examination way of being virtually having the exam or quizzes. So if you can develop some program or software to help the professors or lecturers in the university to monitor the honesty of the students to take the exam, because a lot of people, they complain they will have some other people to have the exam instead of themselves, and they are complaining about the honors, complaining about the grade. I saw it in the CU secret every day. And then they are asked for the pass or fail. So if your company can develop some kind of apps, so other than Hong Kong, I'm sure, you can sell this kind of software or hardware over the world because this will be another big chunk of business as well. So do some uh, social listening on your social media and also see whether your uh, company technology can capture those trends as well. And for the second point about eating at home, of course, we have all experience to uh, call the delivery service. And I have numerous of unpleasant experience about ordering through the two major platform now. So how can you do better in the CS? Because uh, when the demand is surging, at the same time, the customer service is another key issue. So whether your company can capture such kind of opportunities is just an example that you capture the mega trend. So for example, other than more time at home, you can also do similar mind maps and also tree diagram to derive all the technology and all the business opportunities and find out whether it is potentially increased or potentially, de potentially decreased. So this is the first step. And for the entertainment in home and life, I'm needless to go through everything, but Netflix and also all the in home uh, gyms equipment, they are, the sales is actually doing very well. So at the same time, if you can develop some app which is more user friendly to track all those calories calculation or all those things, this will be nice. And of course, you will say, Tina, nowadays they have a lot of such kind of similar apps available. But Always think about what is your value added, what is your unique selling points, what is the additional things that your platform have and other people doesn't have. So always there is a lot of existing uh, rivals in the, in the market, but you can always find out your uh, core competence together to develop your unique selling points. So this is the first step, how to identify the growth opportunities uh, to derive from the mega trend under, as a result of the pandemic. And the second step is to match your behavior, uh, is to match your technology, your core competence with the behavior and also business change. This will be a very nice project that you can uh, take reference to. So firstly, you should identify whether it is existing trend and also new trend. 
and the x-axis is about uh, whether this trend is temporary or structural. For example, uh, if this is a structural change and the trend is existing, this is a long-lasting acceleration. So for these things, we call it catalyst. For example, the streaming platform. So long before the COVID-19 or long before the economic downturn, we always, we always and already have the existing trend uh, there. And also the catalyst uh, of the COVID-19 and also all the social unrest is actually speeding up. So for this quadrix, uh, we have to strengthen it because this is your existing uh, uh, core competence. And while for the new trend and also structural, it's about innovations. So you have to build it fast, especially you are the new ventures. So we cannot compete with all those big uh, guys, but the, in, in the worst, you have to derive your technology and rethink it just like the mind map. Uh, we have find a new potentials, new market. You have to build it fast. You have to be the pioneer in order to provide the best service. So this uh, will cost you some innovations. So fast is the keywords. And then for some existing trend, and this is a temporary acceleration. For example, video game when you're playing at home. So you can see the sales trend is upwards, but this is having a slightly boost only. So for this, I would advise if you're a big corporation, you better ignore the temporary trend. But if you are small and also in the venture development stage as a startup, you have to do it for once at least to capture some cash and money to sustain for your survival. Okay, so for the boost, I would advise it, do it for once, but don't spend too much focus and time on it because uh, it is not long lasting enough. For example, a very classic example right now is about the mask. Yeah, so for the long term sustainable trend, you will say, Tina, is this a long time, uh, is this a long term trend? However, uh, a lot of people, they are concerning about the sustainability, whether it is eco-friendly to produce so much plastic uh, to damage our Mother Earth because the COVID-19 is already a revenge from the nature. So the new material uh, or the new kind of technology about the protections and the hygienic measures is the trend, but not about the mask. So the mask is actually a boost. In the long term future, the new material science or new types of uh, hygiene or even though the vaccine protection is the existing trend restructural. So it is either require you to have the innovations or catal catalyzing your own technology. But for the old things, do it for once, don't invest too much. Of course, you will say it's strategic, but you can see that the price, especially if you are in Hong Kong, you can see that it's down to less than one dollar per mass nowadays, instead of more than $10. So the, the cost and also the return is not in proportionally, uh, just like the previous uh, surge in the pandemic outbreak time. Okay, and the final call drag is nice to have. For example, it's a, just a temporary shift and also you just have a, a, a very low demand for just one wave. I would call it as a displacement. For example, the jigsaw puzzles, just like uh, the HBR has stated. And also for this kind of things, if you have existing stock, just sell it out. Don't spend time to rethink about the old trend and also just a small displacement into a, a temporary search. And one more advice, so never peanut buttering. What does that mean? It's about your cash, your operating cash. Cash is always the king. It is the 101 of all the business management subjects. So you have to survive before you can ask for the future. Okay, so a lot of entrepreneurs will come and say, Tina, I cannot survive today, so how can I paint the picture to my investor? Of course, if you do not have uh, sufficient cash, you cannot survive. So just do uh, just like what I have said, for the boost, you have to do it for once and also for the nice to have one. If you have stock on hand, you can do it. So cash is the king for your survival, but never short sell yourself, especially under this kind of period. Because from the investor head, I can say that nowadays we can find some good projects and then with a lower valuation because of the hard time. But still, as an entrepreneur, because today is the startup workshop, okay? So I wear the hat of the entrepreneur uh, mindset. So never short sell your projects. 
find some, uh, even though if you really need some urgent cash, find some investor, they have the strategic meanings on your networking, on your distribution for your future as well. So they can give you some good cash to uh, help you for survival, but at the same time, they will bring additional value. So don't just go for the cash and then uh, short sell your company. We saw enough cases. Okay, and the second point when you are capturing, no matter you're capturing what kind of uh, new mega trend or the new technology development, data is the king. So FinTech is not about finance only, it's, about more, it's more about tech. So data and for the AI to train your, better train your AI and also all kinds of things, they are related to data. So today's for your survival, cash is the king. For the future, data is the emperor. No matter what kind of industry or technology or your service, just try to collect meaningful data to develop your future. So a lot of uh, ventures, they will come to me and told me there's a, they have made a major mistake. They told me that, um, for example, one of my prop tech uh, students, I will say, or classmate, I will say, um, they have developed property tech uh, to, to check about the hotel and also the habits of the tourists during uh, the good time. And they have stopped all the co data collection right now after the social unrest and also the pandemic situation outbreak. I told them it is absolutely wrong because you have to capture all the good and bad data, even though for those people, uh, they don't have uh, different travel. You have to capture all those things in order to better train your AI, in order to better train your system to learn about how to manage the ups and downs situation. So this is the worst situation and it's the best situation. How can you balance it? And how can you use those data to forecast maybe probably another wave of pandemic, which I don't wish to happen, but it will happen. So don't just collect the data or I would say clean data, just like the good old days. You have to collect the bad data and you have to collect all those data which is useful for your future. So don't stop collecting the data. It will be the emperor for your future as well. Okay, so uh, another things I would like to share is about how to recraft your sales pitch or investment pitch to your investor in order not to lose the support from them. So there is another good uh, HBR articles. You can search it online. It's called When It's Time to Pivot, What's Your Story? So I know you have uh, uh, already have another workshop about how to craft your investment pitch. So this will be the three points under the pandemic situation. You have to we look into it. The first one is always focus on the big picture. So when you are crafting your company mission, you have to promise a reach to destination. It should be bought enough, your narrative, and also with the umbrella ambitions, but not a single and narrow solutions. Otherwise, you would disappoint your uh, investor a lot. So always focus on your big picture. It should be big enough. I will have some example sharing uh, right after I cover all the points. So the second point is about the signal continuity. So human minds really treasure about the consistency in value. So no matter how you change and remodel your projects, so after your fundraising, you should have the continuous signal. So you should not uh, change and deviate from your original thoughts too much. For example, today's uh, for the example that I will share about Lapix. So uh, they have the mission about offer the best home video viewing for everyone. So this is their mission. And this is the old, in the old days, they have shared uh, their DVDs, they have shared the uh, video tape to their customer. They have uh, always lent those things and then in a good price and good service. But after digitalization, they have changed into the video on demand when the technology and the streaming uh, in the infrastructure is available. So they have not deviated a lot. They just always focus on the big picture to promise to reach the destination, but they are not just uh, really narrow down themselves about saying, I offer the best DVD rental. I offer the best uh, uh, service in the physical store, brick and mortar store. So they are not that stupid. 
they are just focusing on the big picture. So right now, if the technology are ready, everything are ready, the video on demand, especially with the catalyst about the COVID-19, everything has boost immediately. And they have also signaled a continuity. Um, they do not deviate a lot from their original uh, mindset to offer the best videos uh, to the customer. Okay, and the third point and the most important point is about moving quickly, but with humility. What does that mean? So if you really need to pivot or adjust a lot from your original thoughts, you have to show the empathy as an entrepreneur and also remorse. They are actually the bomb uh, when you're informing the important people, especially your stakeholders. So move quickly, do not be too complacent. I have met quite a lot of uh, entrepreneur, they are really uncoachable, I will describe in that uh, sense. So they just very uh, focus on what they, they're very persistent in a good way in saying, but at the same time, they are very complacent as well. So we should put down our own ego and then move quickly and also with the humility. We be more and then we communicate transparently. And also if you have to apologize, just do it and you have to move quickly. Of course, uh, you will ask, okay, so if I move so quickly, will it be uh, in conflict with the first and second point? But if this is really critical for your company to revive and also uh, switch the direction quickly, do it. But this is the final point. So this is the case sharing of Lethix as well. So when they are doing the global uh, uh, section, I should say the global layoff, and then they have a very uh, classic uh, course material right now about the, how they communicate with their employees about their layoff. And also uh, their employees right now, their morale has been founded after the layoff has communicated and then two years later, all their morale has come back. So do it in a very humility, do it with humility and do not be complacent if you have any important change as well. So when you are delivering, delivering your sales pitch or investment pitch, so be assured these three points is important, especially under the pandemic and new normal, situa new normal situation right now. And the other uh, good tips that I can share with you guys is always create your own battlefield and environment. Um, everything is transient right now. So we are talking about the inter-discipline uh, instead of just one platform. Everything is about playing in an arena. You can define your own battlefield. So always challenge yourself. So just now I have, teach, I have shared about uh, why and then how. And then this part, I will share more about how to prepare yourself psychologically. So we should always have a mindset of good resilience and then always ask and challenge your own self as well. So every day I, I have met quite a few of good entrepreneurs. They will ask why not? And they create their own uh, new standard in the market. For example, one of the company that I have worked for uh, was Dyson. So at that moment, James Dyson is, so James Dyson is still here. And then uh, he always challenged the market standard. Uh, when he innovates about the vacuum cleaner, he will not think about the old, uh, he will not be limited by the old standard. So he invented the vacuum cleaner without any cord. And then for the, uh, I would say fan or the environmental control things, the filter, they don't have place. And for the hair dryer, everyone you can see, uh, the Dyson hair dryer, they don't have any old looking like the previous one. The motor is in the handle. So always reset and also challenge the market standard and you are actually your own limit. While during your presentation, especially for the investment presentation pitch, you have to make something invisible visible. So challenge about yourself, how to present and how to make a good demonstration because seeing is believing. Okay, so keep creating and keep innovations. And then uh, I have a little bit interactive, I have prepared a few uh, interactive uh, questions to you guys. So I know I don't have the instant message box pop up, but I can also, you can also do the brain exercise by yourself. So how can you uh, remodel a circuit during the pandemic situation? 
Okay, so this will be the answer. So during the pandemic situation, a lot of social distancing measure has imposed. So the circus, they are so innovative. They sell the dunk of the lion in Australia and also in Europe. Why? Because the dunk of the lion actually can expel some kinds of wild animals because uh, during the pandemic, all the wild animals, they enjoy the nature without any human disturbance. And right now, they will just intreat into some houses, especially in Australia. So the tongue of the lions is actually help to expel those kind of happy livings all around your houses. So this will be another boost in your career, in your, in your business. So you can see uh, this is a surge in the temporary demand, but this is good for your survival because the circus right now, they cannot do the performance. Okay, there are some other kinds of innovative uh, and also creative solutions. So they use the penguins feet to paint all those nice pictures on the shirts and then they sell. They ask the goats to paint the picture and then we sell it to do some artistic creative. And also they ask the tiger or lion to scratch on the jeans and then they have built the uh, brand like the animal damage. So this is another challenge to see whether you are creative or innovative enough. And the second challenge is about how will you remodel bodyguard? This is in China. So bodyguard, right now, no travel. I just stay home. Maybe you just uh, fire half of them and then remain one or two as the door guard. So how can you remodel bodyguard? Okay, so this is the <clears throat> creative solutions. So nowadays the mega trend is about cyber security. So some of the bodyguard, they have the academy about how to encrypt, sorry, how to equip themselves with the cyber security knowledge. Okay, so this is another kind of digital defense in their training. Another one is about the networking, network security skills. So there may be a lot of things, the device in the hotel or in the meeting room. So maybe those bodyguard, instead of you know, the traditional one, um, they will just help and then use those machine to check whether this room is clean or not clean in terms of no kinds of uh, if droppings. Yeah, so this is another defense in the digital age. So other than that, what kinds of innovative solutions that you can rethink to add on to your current technology? It's about your own imagination. There's no boundary. So how to put the mega trend into your original industry is another kind of challenge to see whether you can survive, especially under the new normal. So even though the bodyguard in China, they can uh, equip themselves with the network security skills and also cyber security skills. So don't tell me that you cannot think of anything. If you cannot think of anything, I'm sorry, your business will be, how to say, I, I should not say some harsh work, but your business will not be able to survive to capture the future trend. So another very updated news is about the Singapore airline. So unlike very sad story about the, the Cafe Pacific one. However, in the Singapore airline, they launch some training school. So you cannot imagine the Singapore airline, they are actually launching some corporate training business. So other than the traditional one of having some business adequate, they also have some communication classes uh, they have the food delivery, they have some kinds of uh, public tours to their training school. They also have some innovation and also digital transformation uh, courses available in Singapore Airlines. So a lot of requests from the business and they have successfully changed themselves and they have just launched today to diversify their revenue stream under the pandemic. So it's another challenge to yourself and to your company, whether you are creative and innovative enough to survive or 
to develop even though uh, for the future mega trend that you can capture off. So no one can tell whether this kind of training school can survive after the pandemic situation. But of course, it's a good try. At least uh, they have the layoff similarly, but still they find some other way to survive and to provide some service excellence courses. And it's also a good PR and communications to advertise your brand name under the uh, pandemic as well. Because all the people will think, okay, so how can these two industry can come across together? It's about an arena. So maybe Singapore Airlines in the future, they will not be offered the airline service only, but they offer a series of training and they can be another institute which is famous for the service excellence because it is a very famous service industry. So how to revamp yourself, not to deviate a lot from your original mission, and how to communicate it with humility is another art of communication as well. So another local cases in Hong Kong, so it's also developed under the pandemic from two store to six store for this kind of uh, stove, okay? So whether you are sensitive enough, whether you can capture the trend, so this gentleman, he has built his business before the pandemic situation, but how can he capture the in-home dining part. So he is sensitive enough. He got the distribution uh, humbly from a Japanese uh, manufacturer, and then he can successfully capture the trend of in-home dining. And he successfully expand himself from two stores to six store. So this is not a kind of high-tech things. It's all about marketing and business remodeling. He can also change himself and he can also expand his business. You can say he is lucky, but opportunities always uh, love and also always uh, give mercy to those people who are well prepared. Okay, so just like what I have promised, I will share what our company has done during the new normal. So uh, just like what we, I have said, we have the core uh, products of having the boring oral examination to prepare for students for ABRSM exam. And the exam certainly stopped. And that's why no people in Hong Kong have actually uh, practicing and also having the examination training. So we have launched a live class together with this uh, camera. And then the teachers, because of the social distancing, and we have to protect the piano teacher as well. So right now with this tool, with this two camera, the teachers can through this platform or app, which developed by our own, and then they can teach you the pianos uh, during the social distancing. So the teachers can teach in a homeroom or in the, in the office, and while the students can also uh, have the instant and timely feedback to have the live classes as well. So this is another uh, opportunities that we launch rapidly, fast enough to capture the trend. And the other mega trend, which a lot of people haven't touched nowadays, especially in Hong Kong, is about the migration. Okay, a lot of people, they choose to leave Hong Kong because of whatever reason. And then uh, a lot of demand, uh, they said that they informed us that they would like to find teachers when they are in UK or in Canada. But quite a lot of students, they cannot find good teachers locally in UK or Canada or Australia. So they asked the old teachers in Hong Kong to teach without boundary. Okay, so even though your uh, children, if you choose to migrate to UK or to whatever countries, you can still follow your teachers in Hong Kong and learn the pianos continuously. Because uh, if you change teachers, I think a lot of people, they have the experience of learning pianos. They will, they will know that there's another protocol, different hundreds of teachers, they have hundreds of ways to teach you. So quite a lot of uh, good uh, development with this live class and also the application platform can be used. And of course, if you are interested, you can always download the app from the App Store and also Google Play and then have a try. And also let us know because we develop it very quickly. So if you have any sharing or experience or learnings, do let me know. You can send me email or even though you can call me and I'm very glad to have the feedback from the uh, user as well. Okay, so final part is about the food for thoughts. So this is, uh, the father of management, Peter Drucker, 
So he has a very well saying, although it's in the good day, old day. So he said that the greatest danger in time of turbulence is not the turbulence, it is to act with yesterday's logic. Okay. Another sharing is about the Darwin uh, evolution theory. So in terms of the new normal, it is never the survival of the strongest or smartest, but the survival of the fittest. So how can we adapt to changes? How can we remodel our business? How can we see the mega trend and convert into our own business, merge into it, and then a conquer a new arena is the success for the future. I always say, be the first of your own self, never be the second of somebody. So first, best only is my belief. Create your own unique selling points. Ask, what is your added value? Will, you, will your business and technology be sustainable or easily be replaced or copied by the others? If so, you have to challenge yourself and rethink whether you should go to this direction or not. So this is the, these are the food for thoughts that I share with you today, and I hope you can have some good takeaway as well. So thank you and good luck. And you can have my contact here. You can WhatsApp me, you can send me through line or WeChat. I can contact in whatever way, in the US or China Alliance way. So just send me email or WeChat or WhatsApp. <laughs> thank you. So any questions from the floor? Good dinner for the sharing, and it is now time to the Q&A sessions. Anyone who has issues to seek advice, please raise your questions through the Q&A button. And yes, we have already received some questions from our audience eager to learn from your experience. And here's the first question. Being, being a Hong Kong startup, what is your view about our risks and opportunities during the trade tensions between US and China, and how we should position ourselves to raise funds from the US investors and which tech sector has more advantages? So I think uh, just like what I have shared, uh, you have to rethink carefully whether you can really do one product or your service can fit for both sides because they are now dividing into two protocols. So previously, especially for VC, uh, in the old day, if you got some good uh, license or technology from the US, your valuation will boost up. But right now, if you have some technology or core patents from the US side, it's actually uh, lower down your valuation. So you have to think about uh, how can you reposition yourself to not to let those VC to expose to such kind of great risk from their eyes. So if you are asking me about how can you position yourself uh, to the investor, you have to really rethink which market you will choose and which market you will develop. If you chose to uh, have the market in the West, in US Alliance, you have to fulfill the future consumer behavior, okay? If you choose to stay out uh, to play with the China camp, you have to think about the government mega trend, especially the coming five year plan. So this will be another good trend that you can ride on. So when you are communicate with your investor, so is their concern about the system risk of being, you know, if you have some core patent from US and you are located in Hong Kong, the VC would definitely lower in the interest as well. So this is some good uh, points to note and I hope I can answer your questions. Oh, and we've got another interesting question from the floor. Um, can our postgraduate students do a research on your project? Sure. So what kind of projects that, uh, that you're interested in? So maybe you can send me an email and I can also just let me know which uh, stream that you're interested in. So other than play notes, other than uh, PAVD, and you can also collaborate with me for my internet program as well. So just let me know and send me the details. Thank you. And going back to the trend of US and China, do you anticipate the trend of US and China decoupling with continue, will continue and how the global supply chain will be affected? So I think the uh, trend will be continue and how the supply chain will be affected, I think it's really obvious. So for example, a lot of uh, factories, they are trying to moving out from China, but there's one trend always stay uh, forever, and this is the golden rules. No matter how you source your products, 
consumer always demand a lower price and have a good uh, CP value, we will say, uh, in the products or service offering. So a lot of people will say, okay, with the decoupling continue, a lot of factory will move out. So quite a lot of things has to pay attention to. The first one is if you move the factory back to your home country or back to another Southeast Asia countries, it's always good to relook into the process innovations. And also it's always good to exert a better and more tighten in your QA process as well. Because you have to uh, add on additional tolerance level in the, the deficiency or the defect products. So for this kind of supply chain things, you have to rethink about how to resource your thing carefully and how to meet the customer demand because the market is efficient if we still believe it. And uh, the digitalization actually uh, uh, burr the boundary of countries. So still, no matter how the trade war will go on, if I am a consumer in US, and I can also order the products from China or from all the countries over the world. Consumer always demand the lower price, better products. So uh, how can I see the supply chain? Of, uh, we show this definite and it's a definite answer, but at the same time, you have to rethink about the quality control and also how you can uh, lower the cost of your production as well. Because if you can still uh, do it, for example, in US by yourself, but the cost has raised maybe 10 times to 10 times, it says finally your consumer will not order your products because there is a better price that you can order online. Uh, the logistic uh, chain is still. Uh, in a good uh, way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. all the time, right? Yes, that's, okay. the time is running out. And thank you, Tina, so for your wonderful sharing. I think it's sharing. okay. So if you have any further questions and I cannot uh, help you guys today, you can always send me email or WhatsApp or LinkedIn, whatever way. So if you are interested in any MBA class and also courses, so just contact me and I will refer you to uh, the Chinese University of Hong Kong as well.